And welcome back to Metropole Sports Center. My name is Nashon Oano. Now we quickly shift gears to some of the sporting events that are going to be taking place in 2020 and uh, what, what we make out of them and what to expect from them. Ronald, uh, we have a couple of uh, important events that are going to be taking place uh, this year. Uh, the first of all, you're going to be having the IAAF Under-20 Championships, uh, which is going, to, which is related uh, later on in the year. Uh, at the backdrop of that, we have the whole conversation about doping. Are we ever going to steer <laughs> away from the doping menace that we have? Uh, it's, 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 you know, doping is like, it's, it's like <laughs> racism. <laughs> it's, it will always be there. It's, okay. It will always rotate around sports, and uh, <clears throat> it's unfortunate that uh, in the past some of our athletes have been uh, found to have to have, to have doped. Uh -huh. But it beg it begs me to ask the question that uh, who are managing these athletes? Because sometimes it's all about maybe the managers are not leading them into the uh, giving them the right directions, and probably these athletes, most of them are young. Mm -hmm. They're so ambitious. They mm -hmm. want to make a name for themselves. Mm -hmm. They want to go out and conquer the world. And uh, we can blame both sides. We can blame the athlete and also mm -hmm. we can blame the managers because, mm -hmm. I mean, for the young athletes, probably you can blame the, the managers because it's the managers who are supposed to lead them. But mm -hmm. for the older generation, probably it's, it's all about being selfish because you find that most of them probably, they know what's at stake. Mm -hmm. And they probably want uh, to get uh, a shortcut to maybe yeah. winning the, the, the ultimate prize. And I think probably that's those are some of the things that are driving uh, athletes or maybe even our sportsmen and women to mm -hmm. try and get into doping. But uh, having said that, I think it's a very bad vice and uh, hopefully uh, the anti-doping agencies will probably be conducting a lot of uh, engagement, a lot of uh, campaign and awareness and mm -hmm. also the, the, the workshops to try and sensitize athletes on the do's, no, not the do's, mm -hmm. the, don'ts. <laughs> the, don'ts, the don'ts of doping because mm -hmm. at, the end of, at the end of the day, if you cheat, you definitely, you definitely catch up with you. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have uh, Wilson who was, who was suspended uh, early this week yeah. over doping allegations. Um, what do you think ha that has, uh, how, how do you think that one is going to affect the image that we already have? I mean, we already have, we are going for the Tokyo Olympics, we have the IAAF coming in the country. Yeah. I mean, how do you think that one affects the image of uh, our athletes? I don't think it really taints our image because if you look at Russia, <laughs> the case that is going on in Russia, probably yeah. the, every every sport has been banned yeah. because of doping. But uh, to me, the, you know, there, there are always those rotten tomatoes in yeah. probably in a, in, a, in a basket full of good poti good good oranges or maybe good tomatoes, <coughs> and uh, it's just uh, probably I feel uh, the ban has come at the right time mm -hmm. because it will probably set the pace for these other younger guys mm -hmm. because they know what's coming if you engage in doping you definitely it will definitely catch up with you mm -hmm. uh, so I, I i don't think it really turns the image of if our, of our country but it just make, it keeps us a lot especially mm -hmm. for the athletes who will be going at the at the, at the state tournament okay yeah. so, so as we are as we are talking about the IAAF under 20 tournament this is how the team performed in the last a competition that was held in Tampa, Finland. In the 800 meters, Solomon Lekuta uh, won the, 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 the game, won the race uh, at 1 minute 46, mi 1 hour 46 minutes and 35 seconds, and then Ngeno Kipngetich and Elliot Christen were second and third respectively. In the 1,500 meters, Alemaz Samuel from Ethiopia is the one who won, and then Miriam Cherop became second, and then Delia Sklabas from Switzerland was the, sec was the second. In total, uh, Kenya took home a total of 11 medals, six gold medals, and then four silver, and then one bronze. Is there a chance for us to improve the medal tally? Definitely there's a big chance because uh, we, we, we are known to be an athletic country. Mm -hmm. If you look at the way Nigerians have been referring to us, they, they tell us, you know what, you guys, you should leave football alone and maybe stick to athletics. To athletics because yeah. we are known worldwide to be a, an athletic power, powerhouse in the, in, in, the, in the world. So I feel we have a very big opportunity to still increase our tally. Mm -hmm. And with the, such medals already, we bag them already in our bags. Mm -hmm. I feel the other athletes will be motivated enough to try maybe replicate the same thing or maybe or double it or double it mm -hmm. so it's 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 a very good sign for us for the things to come in future mm -hmm. yeah okay uh late last year there was a very good news uh, important news that uh, came into the country where safari rally was included into the wrc uh, calendar for this year 2020. um uh, what what do you make of that move 
exciting times, okay. if I can say exciting times, because the last time I watched a, 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 a safari rally action, it was, I was still a young kid back in up country mm -hmm. in, in the outskirts of uh, CIA. Okay. And uh, coming back into the country after very many years, we've been left out. To me, it's an exciting time, plus mm -hmm. it shows how beautiful our country is because for mm -hmm. them to give us an opportunity to host such a big event, mm -hmm. it just shows how much confidence they have in us as a country to host such, a, such an event. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, pro I'm, I'm the first person who, who's looking forward to attending such, to watch this, uh, the, the, this action. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just at the pace of maybe probably more mega, mega and bigger tournaments or maybe events to come for us okay. in, in the country. Okay. Yeah. Do you think it's going to go back to the olden days? Because I remember in the olden days when you hear the word safari rally, <laughs> it could send chills right down your spine. Uh, actually, the, the days when they used to, the, the event used to happen in, in, in Sia, mm -hmm. we used to, the school used to be closed. Uh, because yeah. of that event. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it just shows you the magnitude of this event. And I'm hoping this one will set the pace for the ones that will come and hopefully mm -hmm. it will be a big, it will get even bigger and mm -hmm. better. Okay. Yeah. Borrowing from uh, the candidates, the candidature event that took place uh, late last year, uh, what do you think the relevant stakeholders need to do to take it back to where it was? It's a, it's, it's just a learning process for us because we know we, we know what we did wrong, probably where we, we, we went wrong in terms of hosting it. And uh, to me, I feel they did, they, did very, they did a very good job in terms of hosting this thing. Mm -hmm. And it's now all about maybe the fan engagement, trying to, you know, hype it enough so that the fans can start going back into watching this rally. Because mm -hmm. uh, currently, if you ask me, the, the guys who've been going to watch it, mm -hmm. it it's, it's being said that it's, it's the cool kids yeah. who are going to watch this yeah. rally because mm -hmm. they feel that it's a, it's a good adventure. But I think it's something that it should be inclusive mm -hmm. for every Kenyan to be part of it. And it's all about now hyping it and maybe fun engagement and ensuring that the, the next time we are hosting it again, mm -hmm. uh, there, there'll be a lot of fans who will be part of it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the final conversation that you're going to be having is about the uh, Tokyo Olympics 2020. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the previous, the, the Rio Olympics was bedeviled with a lot of controversy. Yeah. Uh, people were fired. Um, a lot of money was lost. Yeah. Do you think we've come to a point where we can say that we've learned from what happened in the Rio Olympics and we are going to try as much as possible not to repeat the same mistakes? Yeah, I hope we've learned because uh, currently as you speak there are a lot of guys who are facing jail time mm -hmm. and it's true uh, with the Rio Olympics who a lot of uh, maybe a lot of uh, things were wasted in terms of money, in terms of the, uh, the sports equipment that uh, the athletes were supposed to use. Mm -hmm. And I feel we've learned our lesson enough and the guys in charge, they can use the other guys as a case study mm -hmm. because we know what at stake if probably you embezzle funds, funds again. Mm -hmm. And I feel a lot for the athlete because I mean, this is the person that works in day in, day out. Mm -hmm. And for them maybe to be treated this way, for them maybe to have the, the, the money that mm -hmm. rightly it belongs to them to be taken by other guys. Mm -hmm. I, it's it's so it's so it's so it's so saddening and so hurting because they don't know the effort or maybe the hard work these guys put mm -hmm. put in place, night in night out, day in day out, week mm -hmm. in week out, uh, for, for for just to attend this event. And I feel we've learned our lesson and we are bound to see things maybe getting better mm -hmm. than before. Okay. Yeah. Do you think uh, as far as the Olympics are concerned, it's time for us to move from the traditional races that we have? I mean, <laughs> I think s right now we already have that reputation of if it's athletics, then Marathon. definitely yeah. it's, it's a Kenya thing. Do you think it's, it's time for us to like diversify? We already have the likes of Julius Yego who are into the javelin. javelin. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you think it's time for us to move into discus throwing, yes. short put, long jump, and something like that? And there are quite a lot of sports events that <laughs> I wish we as Kenyans would have been part of. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, we must ask ourselves the question that do we have the right infrastructures to probably to allow us to participate in these events? Mm -hmm. Probably maybe like even ice, ice hockey yeah. and all that. And we, we can, we, if you look at a, an athlete like uh, Julius Yego, mm -hmm. you know, he's on record saying that he went to learn the sport on YouTube. Yeah. And you can imagine this is a guy who went to learn on the sport on YouTube mm -hmm. and even broke the world record. Mm -hmm. You can imagine if we had the right infrastructures in place, mm -hmm. if the government had enough time to probably fulfill their promises in terms of putting in uh, the, the ideas that they gave us, mm -hmm. uh, giving us the right infrastructures to include and di diversify our participation in into other different sports, mm -hmm. I feel it would have been the right time for us to go and also participate in those other sports. But I f we, we are not ready. Mm -hmm. Honestly speaking, we are not ready 
probably maybe we should go out and tap those other athletes yeah. of Kenyan origin to try mm -hmm. and participate. But going into the future, this is something that the government should look into. Okay. Yeah. So, sir, thank you so much for finding time to come to studio. Always, Ronald a, always a pleasure. Yeah. So that was uh, Ronald Okoth, the founder of RO Sports Management. And uh, just before we end the show, these are some of the events that you need to watch out for this coming weekend. In the English Premier League, uh, there are major matches that are going to be played during the weekend and uh, early part of next week. Watford is going to be playing against Tottenham Hotspurs, Arsenal versus Sheffield United, Brighton versus Aston Villa, Manchester City versus Crystal Palace, uh, Chelsea versus Newcastle United, and then the major game that is going to be played this weekend is going to be Liverpool versus Manchester United. Um, Chelsea versus uh, Arsenal is also a major game that you need to be watching out for um, early next week. And then we have Manchester United versus Burnley. Um, the final event that you need to watch out for is the FIBA Afro Basketball 2021 qualifiers that are currently going on that are that are currently going on at the Nyayo National Stadium. So far, this is how the fixture has been: Kenya versus Eritrea. Kenya managed to beat Eritrea 120. 12 of 64. South Sudan versus Somalia. South Sudan upstaged uh, Somalia by beating them 112 of 279. And then uh, Kenya versus Tanzania, that is 95 and 59. And then South Sudan versus Eritrea, 115 and 57. Now, some of the fixtures, the games that are going to be played, that is Tanzania versus Somalia. And then there's Burundi versus Eritrea. And then a very, very important game that you need to go watch that is going to be South Sudan versus Kenya. Both of the teams have already shown a very good performance so far. So let's see which team is going to win South Sudan versus Kenya. Remember the Afro Basketball 2021 qualifiers. There's only one slot that is remaining in uh, Group B. So whichever team that is going to come on top of this is going to get the slot to represent the continent in the FIBA Afro Basketball 2021. So that's all the time that we had to. That, that's all the time that we had on Metropole Sports Center. Hoping you have a fabulous weekend. See you next week, same place, same time. Have a good night. <laughs>